Thanks. Um, you guys are. Uh, you guys on on George tonight. By your your phone ring first, Bobby. Yeah? <laughs> Vito, Vito the rule. <laughs> Which I have? Thirty-two. From the Roku, right? Good. Take care. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد استهزي برسول من قبلك فأمليت للذين كفروا ثم أخذتهم فكيف كان عقاب I respect the elders and brothers the last few ayats that we did Going back to ayat number 30, we had mentioned that in this surah, many things have been mentioned about the requests that the mushrik in Mecca were making. Where Allah Ta'ala had mentioned in this surah that some of them they were asking for different mu'jizat, different miracles from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The answer that was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Allah ta'ala is the only one that can bring these miracles and it is not in the power of the anbiya to do these type of things. The last few ayats that we did, Allah ta'ala mentioned and they had asked to bring back our people from the dead and if you can bring a mountain which will walk with you, bring water from the ground, all these different requests they were making for Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah ta'ala said, if there was such a book that I sent down. And this is not Al Quran, Allah Ta'ala said Quran, some type of Quran, some book if I sent. And through that book, the mountains were set in motion, or the earth was split asunder, it was opened up, or if the dead were made to speak through that book, then these people still wouldn't believe in Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Because the reason why they're asking this is in the ayah today, which we are doing. They're just asking it for mockery. They're just mocking Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they don't want to accept the Islam. That's why Allah Ta'ala said, Balillahi al-Amru Jami'a. Allah Ta'ala is the only one that can bring all of these things. And then of course, after that we did the next part of the ayat where some of the Muslims even started becoming victim to this and started feeling that if Allah Ta'ala just open up and do one mu'jiza for them, one miracle, just bring some water from the earth, move a mountain for them, then inshallah they will be able to accept Islam, these people. So Allah Ta'ala uh, rebuked the Muslims, scolding them and telling them, Afalam ye amanu. Haven't the Muslims realized already? Lo yasha Allahu jami'a. If Allah Ta'ala wanted, He could give hidayah and guidance to everybody. This is in the hands of Allah Ta'ala. It's not in the hands of some miracle or some uh, you know, trick that someone can bring and then hidayah comes. Allah Ta'ala is the one who gives hidayah. So therefore the Muslims should not feel like this. And then Allah Ta'ala talked about how those people who are mocking Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they will continuously be in difficulty and there's a chance that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will take over them with his army. That's why Allah Ta'ala said also, أَوْ تَحُلُّ قَرِيبًا مِنْ دَارِهِمْ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ وَعْضُ اللَّهِ Or Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you and your army will enter close to them, right in the outskirts of Mecca, and then حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ وَعْضُ اللَّهِ Until the promise of Allah Ta'ala comes, and that's Fatu Mecca, that might happen to them. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُخْلِفُ الْمِعَادِ Allah Ta'ala does not go against His promise, and He didn't. This happened when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did Fatu Mecca. Like I said here, they were mocking at him, so Allah Ta'ala carries on in the next ayat and for tasalli, meaning consolement on Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like we've done many times before, his heart was very soft, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he wanted these people to become guided. He wanted it so badly. So when he would bring these clear arguments in front of them and they would return it with rejection 
and still be on their kufr and disbelief, this would hurt Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what hurt him even more is that they were mocking him. It's not even that they said, okay, you're, this is your religion, let us go and leave it. They were mocking at him, making fun of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So as a token of consolement, and to console Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, give him a little pat on the back, tell him, don't worry, Allah Ta'ala sent these type of ayats. Where Allah Ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ اِسْتُهْزِيَ بِرُسُلِ مِنْ قَبْلِ those messengers before you, they were mocked as well. They had been mocked already. Isa alayhi salam was mocked by his people. Musa alayhi salam, we've already read about the different things Bani Israel did to them. And the other prophets as well. They were mocked by their people and they also went through difficulties. We are not singling you out, O Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is just something all the Anbiya have to go through. And not even the Anbiya, the muttabi'oon of the Anbiya. Even those who follow the deen of Allah ta'ala and want to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they also will go through some mocking. Right? If, you, if you go into a mall with a turban on and a long jubba, someone's going to say something to you. Our women folk who wear niqab and hijab, they're getting the problems also. They don't tell us for how many people stop at the red light and say, go back to your country, and this, this, that, and that. And they say these different things. I remember when I went to South Africa, my Ustad, Mulan Abdul Hamid I don't know if I told you this story. I believe I said it maybe last week. I'm not sure, I was telling somebody. Uh, he had said that one of the ulama from France had told him this story. And we know that in France now they have outlawed the niqab. The woman is not allowed to wear the niqab. They're trying to start it in England also. So there was one uh, lady who was wearing the niqab and she was shopping in the supermarket. And another lady who was the register girl, she was a Muslim. So when she saw this girl with the niqab, the lady on the register was a Muslim. She was not wearing any hijab at all, nothing. So she said, it is people like you who give us difficulty in this country. The, the country has outlawed the niqab and yet you still wear it. Why don't you go back to your country? When the lady pulled down her niqab, she was a French lady, a white French lady. <laughs> she was a white French woman. And she said, no, it is you people who give the Muslims a difficult. This is my country. I was born here. I'm French, I'm, I'm, I'm from France. I am born here, I'm, uh, I converted to Islam. And I want to wear my niqab, I'm in my own country, I want to do it. So this is uh, what, what happens when Allah Ta'ala gives hidayah and the mockery, uh, it comes in different directions. When a person gets closer to deen, so Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned that the Prophet, so he says that I am the most who's been tested amongst you and then those people who are closer to me, Thumma akrab, thumma akrab. Those who are closer to me and closer to me, they are the ones that will also go through difficulties and they will be tested for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. So Allah Ta'ala mentions here that the people before, the prophets who came before you, stuhzir, istihza. Istihza means to mock, to mock. Mazakar. Any, any, the Peygamber, the, 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 the prophets before them, any mazaki gai. They were, they were joked at and they were mocked at. But Allah Ta'ala does not stop there. It's not that they mocked and mocked and they didn't get any retribution. فَأَمْلَيْتُ لِلَّذِينَ kafar. Allah Ta'ala says, and we granted respite. How many unko muhlat diya? We gave them respite. We gave them a little chance. We let them do it. Allah Ta'ala's halim. Actually, some of the ulama have written that there's two sifat of Allah Ta'ala that we are benefiting directly from 24 hours a day in this dunya. All the time we are directing, and we can say these two sifat and qualities are running the whole world. One is halim, hilm, Allah Ta'ala's forbearing. Meaning, he's burdubah. He does not uh, take us to task for the deeds that we do. We sin. We are all sinners in the eyes of Allah Ta'ala, and we are all doing our wrongs. But yet we make tawbah and Allah Ta'ala forgives. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is halim. Even though we are sinning. And many people are sinning and not making tawbah. And they are being very vehement and being very arrogant about it also. But Allah Ta'ala is halim. That person still eats breakfast the next day. He still has lunch. Right? He still watches his kid graduate from college. He, he curses God and he hates it. And he drinks all night. And he, and he does these things. But yet still Allah Ta'ala gives him chances and chances. He's forbearing. And the second quality is Allah Ta'ala is sattar. He covers all of our sins. If Allah Ta'ala was to open up our sins, I probably couldn't sit here and do the tafsir, and you probably wouldn't be watching the tafsir also. 
it'd be an empty masjid. Nobody would come outside if it wasn't for Allah Ta'ala hiding all of our sins. So Allah Ta'ala is the one that covers, He enshrouds us, and He covers us and covers our sins. So Allah Ta'ala says, فَأَمْلَيْتُ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Those who have disbelief, I'm granting them respite. In another ayat, Allah Ta'ala mentions that don't let it fool you. وَلَا يَغْرُوكَ تَقَلُّبُهُمْ فِي الْبِلَادِ this is because they're walking around and enjoying themselves and they're in the market area having fun and yet they are disobeying Allah Ta'ala don't let that fool you don't let that fool you this is respite Allah Ta'ala grants a chance maybe they'll accept Islam if they don't they'll get a few years which Allah Ta'ala calls mata'un qaleel a little bit of enjoyment 10, 20, 30 years, 40, 50 if they're lucky 75 years of enjoyment and then after that Baghdatan, it comes right quickly, a heart attack, cancer, whatever it may be, and then they're in the dirt like everybody else. Nobody even remembers them after 10, 15 years. So Allah Ta'ala says, kafaru, thumma I give them respite and a chance, thumma akhadtuhum, then I grab them. Then after that, I grab them, obviously with his punishment or with death. How was my revenge on them? Allah Ta'ala asked this. It's a rhetorical question. We're not even supposed to say, yes, or good, or it was bad. It's a rhetorical question. How did I do it? Like the boxer who boxes and knocks the guy out. How was my knockout? You're not supposed to say, it was nice. Oh, you're supposed to say, فَكَيْفَ ikab. How was my revenge on them? How I took revenge on these people? And I've, I've actually, the ulama have said that Allah Ta'ala asking this, He's actually asking us, my re revenge on them, was it for dhulm or was it adl? Zulumta ya ansafi. Was it was I fair or was I oppressive to them? And obviously the answer would be, you were fair, Ya Allah. You were not oppressive. They deserved this. You gave them a chance, and now they are tasting what they did. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentions in the next ayah. أَفَمَنْ هُوَ قَائِمٌ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ وَجَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ شُرَكَاءَ وَجَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ شُرَكَاءَ قُلْ سَمُّوهُمْ أَمْ تُنَبِّئُونَهُ بِمَا لَا يَعْلَمُ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَمْ بِظَاهِرٍ مِّنَ الْقَوْلِ بَلْ زُيِّنَ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مَكْرُهُمْ وَصَدُّوا عَنِ السَّبِيلِ وَمَنْ يُذْلِ اللَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ هَادِ Allah Ta'ala now for the mushikeen to make it clear to them He brings the difference between Himself, Allah Ta'ala and those who He is, who they are worshipping meaning the idols Allah Ta'ala says أَفَمَنْ هُوَ قَائِمٌ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ نَفْسِ Tell me that he who is watching over قَائِمٌ means to watch over He who is watching over every single person بِمَا كَسَبَتْ In regards to what they have earned Allah Ta'ala is watching over every single person and is watching what they have earned, what they have done In the Arabic language, كَسَبْ actually means what you earn, kasb. If you do business and the money that you get, this is called kasbu. In the, in, in the Quran, uh, kasabu actually means amilu or fa'alu, what they have done. Because every single person that does some action, he will earn something from it. He will either earn some punishment or he will earn some reward. So Allah Ta'ala says the word kasabu. So, أَفَمَنْ هُوَ قَائِمٌ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ that Allah Ta'ala who is watching over every single person and watching over what they do. Is he the same as those who they are worshipping, meaning their idols? Can it be possible that he's the same? And they have associated partners for Allah Ta'ala. They have made partners to him. Who have they made partners to? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's watching over all and knows what everyone's doing. How can they associate partners with Allah ta'ala? This is impossible. That's why Allah ta'ala says, Sammu. Name them. Those who are like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are watching over everybody and those who know what everyone is earning from their amal and actions, name them for me. Sammu. Obviously, they will not be able to name them. Then Allah ta'ala says, 
أم تنبئونه بما لا يعلم في الأرض or are these people who are doing shirk and associating partners to Allah Ta'ala, are they now informing Allah Ta'ala in regards to that thing that Allah Ta'ala does not know in the earth? Meaning by saying that Allah Ta'ala has a partner. Are they saying that Allah Ta'ala doesn't know about this partner and they have made him up? Impossible. Allah Ta'ala basically is making fun of them. The ayat before, They made fun of the prophets. So Allah Ta'ala in this ayat is making fun of their shirk. You want to make fun of my prophets? I will make fun of your shirk. Name your idols. Name them who can do the things Allah Ta'ala can do. Oh, or maybe Allah didn't know about these idols. And now you're informing him about it. So Allah is making fun of them right now. Am bidahirin min al Or maybe it is just empty words. Dahirin min al Dahir means apparent. Meaning, there is no haqiqah for it. There is no reality to it. It's just statements. So one of three things. Either they have to name their lords. Either they are informing Allah Ta'ala of something that he doesn't know about these, uh, about these idols because Allah Ta'ala has not said any about them in the Quran or any book that you're supposed to worship them. Or it's just nothing but empty statements. You're just making it up. Wahid amin al means empty words. You're just making it up and there's no reality to it. Then Allah Ta'ala says bel. Bel in the Arabic language comes for idrab. Idrab means imtina. To leave something. So basically Allah Ta'ala is saying da'ahum. Leave them. Even some of the tafsir say da'awatuhum. Leave this da'awah. Don't even waste your time and ask them these questions. Why? Zuyina lilladina kafaru makruhum. It has been beautified for those people who disbelieve makruhum, those things which they are plotting. Because the mushrik in Mecca had made many plots against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they had plots within themselves also. That they were going to do this and do that. And some of them even thought that by doing this and that and the akhirah, there'll be no problem with us. This was the type of plot they were doing also. And also they were plotting against Nabi Islam to kill him. So Allah Ta'ala says, بَلْزُهِيَ لِلِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مَكْرُهُمْ It has now beautified those who disbelieve. It has been made beautiful for them. They're planning. Meaning they're planning against the Rasul. How can someone plan against the Rasul of Allah Ta'ala? Zuyina. Zuyina in Arabic language, if you guys don't know the Arabic language, this is majhul. Majhul in Arabic language is something which has no file. Meaning, we don't know who has made the zheen of this. Yani, kis ne muzayin kiya unka fareeb ko? That's what Allah Ta'ala is saying here. Unka fareeb, unka makar, unko muzayin kiya gya. It has been beautified for them, their plot. They think it's very nice. We're planning against Nabi Islam. It's a good plan. Zuyina, it has been made beautified. Who beautified it for him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did. He's made it look beautiful in their eyes. But actually it's not. It's detrimental to them and it will kill them at the end. And they have been stopped from the Islam. That's what these people are. The, 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 those who go deep into kufr, then they plot against those of iman and also they become stopped from the deen. There's no chance they'll come close to the deen of Allah ta'ala. So it started off with shirk. And kufr, Allah Ta'ala made fun of it. Now Allah Ta'ala is talking about what's the reality of these people. Their plots and planning have been made beautiful for them by Allah Ta'ala because they're so far away from Him. And also Allah Ta'ala has stopped them from the path. They cannot come to Islam. And Allah Ta'ala ends it off with the stamp that whoever Allah Ta'ala leads astray, there's no guide for him. So basically this ayah, the khulas in a nutshell, Allah Ta'ala is the one who's led them astray. And not because he's a dhalim na'udhu billah or he's an oppressor, but actually it's from their kufr and their shirk and their idiocy and the way they are now associating partners with Allah Ta'ala who is qa'imun ala kulli nafs. He's watching every single person. And they know their idols cannot do that. Because they are doing this, so their end point is such that whatever evil they are doing, Allah Ta'ala usqum muzayin kar deta. Allah Ta'ala makes it beautiful. He makes it very nice. They say, I'm doing a very good job. And also after that, they are stopped from the path. Even if they want to come forward and they want to listen to it, Allah Ta'ala stops them, pulls them away from the deen. And then Allah Ta'ala asks a, a question, a rhetorical question. That he who Allah Ta'ala leads astray, there's no guidance for him. 
If Allah Ta'ala makes you lost, nobody can guide you. After this, Allah Ta'ala says that the end point, what happens to them? لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا عَذَابُ الْآخِرَةُ أَشَقْ آخِرَةِ أَشَقْ مَا وَمَا لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَاقَ Allah Ta'ala says, they will have punishment in this world, not only in the hereafter. In this world, they will be punished. وَلَا عَذَابُ الْآخِرَةِ أَشَقْ And the punishment in the hereafter is even worse. Ashaq means even worse. Ashad. It's more severe than the punishment in this world. وَمَا لَهُمْ مِنْ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَاقٍ And there will be no defender. Waqin means, uh, comes from the word waqayaqi. Uh, waqayaqi means a protector. Taqwa. Comes from the same word taqwa comes from that. Taqwa is that which protects you from sins. Same thing, the word waq. So waq means protector. There will be no one who can protect them from the punishment of Allah Ta'ala. They will be wide open and there'll be no armor on them. There'll be no, uh, you know, uh, insurance there to help them out. Nothing will be there. It'll just be them and Allah Ta'ala and Allah Ta'ala will do whatever He wants with them. May Allah Ta'ala protect us. After Allah Ta'ala speaks about those who get punished, it is the habit of Allah Ta'ala in the Quran to not leave us so sad, but then He opens up the door of Jannah and chooses those people who do good. What do they get? So Allah Ta'ala mentions here. مَثَلُ الْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي بُعِدَ الْمُتَّقُونَ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ أُكُلُهَا دَائِمٌ وَظِلُّهَا تِلْكَ عُقُبَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا وَعُقُبَ الْكَافِرِينَ النَّارُ Allah Ta'ala says, The description of paradise, that which has been promised for those who are the muttaqoon, those who have left sin. We always emphasize on this, that Allah Ta'ala, He could have said here, وُعِدَ mu'minun, Right? He could have said, because you need iman to get, to get uh, into paradise. Iman is the main thing. You have to be, have faith in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But that is known by every single person. But what is not known by us, is that we have to have taqwa to get there. And taqwa means, talkul ma'asi, to leave the sins. Even the qurbani which is coming up, right? Ramadan, I told you about it. Ramadan, right? Ramadan is, uh, what is it? La'allakum uh, tattakun, right? Right now, the hajj, right? Fatazawwadu fa inna khayra zad al taqwa. Right? Bring all your stuff to hajj with you. Go properly, bring your suitcase and your olive oil and your soap and everything with you. Tazawwadu. Allah says, don't go there empty handed. Bring everything you need. Your shoes, ihram, everything. But for inna khayra zari taqwa. Make sure you bring your taqwa with you also. Because that is the maqsad and purpose of hajj. For us to become muttaqi. And again also coming up, the dhabiha, tadhiya, what we are doing coming up. لا ينال الله لحومها ولا دماؤها ولا كينال التقوى منكم. It is not the meat and the blood which reaches Allah Ta'ala. We are not just slaughtering animals here. We can do that anytime. But it is the taqwa that reaches Allah Ta'ala. The fact that Allah Ta'ala told you to do this and you're doing it, that's what reaches Allah Ta'ala. Following the commandment of Allah Ta'ala. So those who follow the commands of Allah Ta'ala and those who left sins, the jannah for them which is, uh, which is promised for them, this is the description of it. Allah Ta'ala mentions, تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Underneath these gardens, there are rivers flowing. There are rivers flowing underneath these gardens. So the picture is, 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 uh, is depicted in front of us of beautiful gardens and rivers. A lot of gardens and rivers in Jannah, which we love, right? If a person wants some type of paradise, that's what he thinks about. Gardens and rivers, he doesn't want no pavement there and asphalt and all these things. That's for here. Forget about streets. We want to walk in the grass. We want to sit near the water and have a nice picnic and things like this. City, I don't know, maybe we live in Manhattan, so maybe you want Jannah to Manhattan and Jannah also. Allahu Allah. So Allah Ta'ala says, then Allah Ta'ala mentions some other Ukulaha Its food will be forever. Nothing runs out. You like you go to Costco and you have to get the receipt and come back next week and you can get it on sale. Nothing like that. Nothing there's no nothing runs off, no rain checks. When you come, you get whatever you want. Whatever you want. No shortness of pizza, 
chocolate cake, ice cream, biryani, sambosa, everything. You get everything there. Doesn't run out. Wadilluha. And the shades also are forever. Dhilluha. Why? Allah is saying this. There's no sun. The sun usually gets rid of the shade. When the sun comes out, it will get rid of the shade. The moon comes out, it gets rid of the shade. There's no sun, there's no moon there. How will it be daytime? When we get there, inshallah, we'll find out. But there's no sun there. There's no heat. You know, the sun is beautiful, it helps us out. But that heat, and when you drive back in Asif, it's very hard. So there's no sun there. The, the, the shade will be forever. The shade also, the breeze, like you can get a good breeze. Tilka ladina taqo. This is the result of those people, again, who had taqwa, who feared Allah Ta'ala, and then Allah Ta'ala mentions again, those who disbelieved, Jahannam, the fires of hell, that will be their, um, their abode, that will be their result. After this, Allah Ta'ala mentions about some people at the time of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who accepted the book and some who didn't. Allah Ta'ala mentions, وَالَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَفْرَحُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكِ وَمِنَ الْأَحْزَابِ مَنْ يُنْكِرُ بَعْضَهُ قُلْ إِنَّمَا أُمِنْتُ أَنْ أَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ وَلَا أُشْرِكَ بِهِ وَلَا أُشْرِكَ بِهِ إِلَيْهِ أَدْعُو وَإِلَيْهِ مَآبَ Allah Ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابِ And those people who have been given the book, the book here means the Torah. Those who've been given the book, يَفْرَحُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكِ They are happy with that which has been sent upon you. Ye ek pitori dalil. This is a proof Allah Ta'ala is bringing in front. Because there were people who were rejecting Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah Ta'ala brings this as a proof that look, there are some people who've been given the book before the Torah. For example, the Mufassir had given Abdullah bin Salam, who was a Jewish person and a scribe and a, uh, and a scholar amongst the Jews also. It's mentioned in the books of Hadith that when Abdullah bin Salam accepted Islam, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him that will the Yahud and will your Jewish friends accept Islam? And Abdullah bin Salam said that let's put them to a test. I don't think they will, Ya Nabi. I know them. Put them to a test. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had Abdullah bin Salam hide behind one bush. And some of the heads of the Jews came. And he asked, Abdul, he asked the heads of the Jews, Mada taqul fi Abdullah bin Salam? What do you say about Abdullah bin Salam? They said, oh, he's a great person. What a person. He's great. His father's great. Grandfather was great. Beautiful man, akhlaq. What a person. So then Nabi Sassam said, have you heard that he accepted Islam? What do you think about him now? They said, he's the worst person. His father was a khabis. Grandfather khabis also. They were all terrible people. He's the liar, everything. Then Abdullah bin Salam came out and, and told them, you know, looked at them and said, look at this. So of course, didn't understand who these people were. So Allah Ta'ala mentions some of the people, some of the Yahud and even the Christians, they accepted Islam and they were happy. Yafrahun. They are rejoicing and they are happy with that which now uh, you have been sent down to you. Why are they happy? Because it corroborates, right? Anyone who has an open mind from amongst the Yahud and the Christians and they look at the Quran, they will understand and see that this is from that same light. It's coming from one fountain. The Quran, the Torah and the, and the Bible are all coming from one source. And they will see that. And the shukuk, the doubts that they have in their stories, and the things that are missing in their books, they'll be able to fill in those empty places by looking at the Qur'an. Even today I was talking to one young man who studies at our and he was actually a Christian before, and not even, he was studying to be a priest and a missionary. And he's come to our now, and he's studying. And he said his mother, who was a Christian, uh, she said that, I read the story of Maryam, and she's a vehement Christian, she's very against him. And she said, I read the story of Maryam, and I like the way that Isa salam, from his cradle defended his mother. And I also like this part, that part of the story. So he said, why don't you? No, no, but I, don't, I still think your Quran is wrong. But those stories are so beautiful. What about, no, no, forget it. Right? So these are the things that happen uh, with many of these where they don't. But some of them are such where they're happy with what Allah Ta'ala has revealed to you on the Islam. وَمِنَ الْأَحْزَابِ مَا يُنْكِرُ بَعْضًا and from the delegation, Ahzab, the group, 
Ahzab could either mean the Jews or it could mean the Jews and the Mushrikeen Mecca. Both of them. Because we know in Surah Ahzab, which we'll do later on, that a group, a delegation, or you can say uh, a coalition force was formed between the Jews and the Mushrikeen Mecca to destroy the Muslims. So some ulama say Ahzab means these people. That the Jews, they are rejecting some of the book. They like the kisses, they like the stories. The Jews, they like the stories of Quran and they enjoyed it. And they said that it's very close to what our book is. But when it came to ahkam, when it came to salat and how to clean yourself and not doing the Sabbath but doing Juma, right? And changing the Qibla and all these things, they didn't like that. They said, no, no, we don't like this. No, no. The story was nice. Musa's stories are nice. We like that that you mentioned Moses in the Quran. Jesus, we don't like that, the Jews said. But then they said that all these ahkam and these different rules, that are, we don't like that. And it was the mushrik in Mecca, they were rejecting some of the Quran, meaning Ar-Rahman. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ مُشْجُدُوا لِلْرَحْمَانِ قَالُوا وَمَا الرَّحْمَانِ They said, who is Rahman? When it was told to them to make sajda to Rahman, they said, who is Rahman? We don't know who Rahman is. So the mushrik in Mecca were rejecting some of the Quran also. Then Allah Ta'ala tells Nabi Sallallahu to say, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ Tell them that I have been ordered that I worship Allah Ta'ala وَلَا أُشْرِكُ بِهِ And I do not associate any partners with Him. Right? Whether you people have rejected the book, you've accepted some of it, I have been ordered to only worship one Allah and I cannot do any shirk with Allah Ta'ala. إِلَيْهِ أَدْعُوا وَإِلَيْهِ مَآبْ To him I call towards and to him is my return. I cannot now turn and start worshipping idols. Which was the request of the mushrik in Mecca that do shirk for six months and then will do tawheed for six months. Nabi Sam said, no, I can never do that. After this, Allah Ta'ala mentions the last ayat will do. وَكَذَلِكَ أَنزَلْنَاهُ حُكْمًا عَرَبِيًّا وَلَئِنِ اتَّبَعْتَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ بَعْدَ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَا لَكَ مَا لَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا وَاقَ Allah Ta'ala mentions here وَكَذَلِكَ أَنزَلْنَاهُ حُكْمًا عَرَبِيًّا And in this way, we have sent down a decisive judgment. حُكْمًا means a decisive judgment عَرَبِيًّا in the Arabic language. It's not the Torah and it's not the Injil, but it is a hukum, it is a order from Allah Ta'ala, and it is in the Arabic language. That's why the more closer you get to the Arabic language, the more closer you get to the Quran. Arabic is very, very important for us to learn, and it's impossible to understand the meaning of the Quran without understanding the Arabic language. We have to know it. And Nabi Islam, if you follow their desires, their whims and their fancies. Meaning, if you desire, if you follow their requests to worship idols for parts of the year, and they will come on to heed, or you follow different things that they are saying, after knowledge has come to you, after the knowledge has come to you, if you happen to follow them and follow their desires and what they are asking you to do, مَا لَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلِيُّ وَلَا وَاقِ O oh, Nabi Islam, there will be no friend for you. Malik, Malika min Allahi, Malika min Allahi min wali. There will be no protector for you from the punishment of Allah Ta'ala, and there will be no defender as well. This is a warning to even Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, O oh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do not follow their whims and fancies and what they are requesting you to do. Of course, the ulama have said this was said bi sabil al farv. Meaning, uh, it was said hypothetically. You know hypothetically means? It's not really true. If you were to, وَلَا أَنِتَّ بَعْتَهُمْ فَرْضًا The Umar al-Tafsir said فَرْضًا Meaning, Nabi Sallam, there was no doubt that Nabi Sallam was not going to follow. He was not going to follow them. He knows. But Allah Ta'ala, actually the message is through Nabi Sallam, but coming to who? To us. That if these type of things are coming in front of you, where those who don't believe in Allah Ta'ala are telling you to leave the deen of Allah Ta'ala. And it's simply ahwa, only desire thing. They're just desiring, just desires, whims and fancies. And you follow that with ilm, with knowledge. The knowledge has come to you, this is haram. And you follow that, then the warning from Allah Ta'ala is, is when his punishment comes, Allah Ta'ala will have no wali there for you, no one will be able to protect you. 
and nobody will be able to be defend you from the punishment of Allah Ta'ala. May Allah Ta'ala protect us from this and open up the ways for every single one of us. Inshallah, we'll finish up the Ruku next week and finish up uh, and then we'll start the Surah Ibrahim, Inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanallah.